Welcome to your Optavia Lifebook audio channel. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Christy Baker and I'm a certified Optavia health coach. And I put this channel together purely to be a resource for all of Optavia's clients. It is my gift to you. And so I just asked a small little favor. If you could go ahead and push the like button down below, um, turn on your notifications so you know when the next video is coming out and feel free to share it with any other clients. That would be super helpful. Um, that's my only ask for you. I don't run any ads or anything else on this channel. It's just, um, just purely meant to be a resource that helps improve your experience with Optavia. Today, we get to jump right into element four. And this is such an amazing chapter. It's one of my favorites. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Element four is titled Building a Healthy Mindset. In element four, we will understand how the people, places, and things in your surroundings can be modified to serve you in creating your new story. We will realize the power and importance of self-awareness. And we will give you the tools for building a healthy mindset. You have now acquired some powerful tools contained within the Habits of Health transformational system. They're designed to help you learn and install your new behaviors. Hopefully, you now understand that real change isn't just possible, it's inevitable. That is, if you're willing to become a student of the creative process and put in the time to make the necessary changes to install the Habits of Health. In order to overcome and move past your current behaviors and tendencies and make your weight, your health, and your well-being sustainable, we need to add an element for building a healthy mindset. My goal is for you to become the dominant force in your life. And when I say my goal is for you to become the dominant force in your life, I'm being very serious. When you have the internal stability and the external equilibrium, each day of your life will become all out magical. You will possess a habit that most have never even thought about. So what am I talking about? It's the ability to respond to whatever life throws at you, to respond in a way that will always help you in your life building process. And believe me, life is going to get in the way. We will eventually talk about how you can modify your surroundings to help the people, places, and things in your life support you in your quest to improve your health and your life. But right now, we're gonna focus on you. So let's get started. I have a couple questions for you in this chapter. So as I read them, pause, reflect, and take a moment and text yourself your answer to those so you can share your reflections with your coach at your next check-in call. Question number one, who is responsible for your current health and well-being? Is it your parents, your spouse, your friends, your environment, your genetics, or you? The correct answer is you. If you disagree, I consider it important to understand why. In fact, I would encourage you to write why you think so. Most people have a natural tendency to look outside of themselves to explain why life is happening to them. In fact, our ancestors survived because of their ability to detect and respond to threats. Like a neural tripwire, we would immediately go into a de defensive position, shut down, and release a series of chemicals that would allow us to either fight, flee, freeze, or faint if, without even thinking about it. There was no time to evaluate because you would be eaten, stung, bitten, or otherwise badly hurt. Let's talk about who's in charge of your life. Let's explore a little more about how your mind works. Today, most of the things that could have killed you, saber-toothed tigers, for example, are all in the past. Today, your alarm system has been hijacked and survival is about protecting your ego, your identity, and your beliefs. 
The focus has shifted from a need to a need to be right and the need to not look bad and the need for social approval and the fear that we don't have enough stuff. For many, this becomes a feeling where we think that life is happening to us. Part 1.6 of Dr. A's Habits of Health, You in Charge of Yourself, Setting Up for Success, explains how we evolved since ancient times. There will be much more detailed discussion of how our brain, mind, and our emotions are designed as we unpack the habits of a healthy mind later. For now, it's important for you to understand who is leading you on this journey to optimal health and well-being. Most people are sleepwalking through their days, unaware and not conscious of what's happening around them. They're not sensitive to the reactive state that they live in and how they are, res they are responding on a daily basis to the people, places, and things in their life. They do not know how to treat themselves. Life is happening to them. So how about you? Let me ask you a question so that we can assess how you are currently responding to your world. Choose only one answer for each. So there'll be two categories. Our first category is your intelligence. Your second category is your character. So under the intelligence category, you can choose one of the following statements. Your intelligence is something very basic about you and cannot change. Number two, you can learn new things, but you can't really change how intelligent you are. Number three, your intelligence is fixed by age five and cannot change beyond then. <clears throat> or lastly, your intelligence, no matter how much intelligence you have, you can always significantly change it. Go ahead and mark one of those categories. Our second part of the question is, your character as a person is, set and there's not much you can do about it. Number two, it's flexible so that you can do things differently, but the important parts can't really be changed. Number three, our character is determined by your family and cannot really be altered. Or lastly, our character is changeable and you can always modify basic things about the kind of person you are. Here's a couple more categories. So take a moment and text yourself which one that you believe about yourself. <clears throat> Our next category is when I'm presented with a challenge, I find myself getting upset most of the time, usually shy away from it and hope someone else will take care of it. I find myself making excuses. Or lastly, I look to see what I can learn. Which category do you fall under? Our next question is when I'm in an argument, do I find it important to be right above everything else? Do I find myself quick to point the blame? Do I feel sorry for myself? Or lastly, do I seek to understand what the other person is saying? Our next question. When something bad happens in the world, I find myself focusing on whose fault it was. Do I find myself wondering why the world is not different? Do I find myself blaming people who hold other beliefs? Or lastly, do I seek to understand what can be learned from it? And here's one more question for you. When I find myself overeating, do I blame it on someone else? Do I blame it on something else? Or do I blame it on myself? Lastly, do I also look to understand why? When I find myself getting upset because someone makes me look stupid, do I find myself unable to think straight? Do I look to blame it on someone else? Do I feel angry? Or do I realize only I can upset myself? I'm gonna show you a little diagram here in just a moment. <clears throat> in this diagram, where do you place yourself most of the time as you go throughout your day? Are you above or below the line? Yeah, let me show it to you. 
here we go. We have the little person who is above the line. This person is open, they're curious, they have a growth mindset. The person who is below the line, as you can see by their posture, they, have, they are closed, they are defensive, and they always want to be right. If you find yourself mostly below the line and answered anything other than number four in the questions above, you're not taking as much responsibility as you could. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's not your fault. You are most likely still allowing your ancient brain to run the show, and you're not alone. And it doesn't make you a better or worse person for it. It simply means that you are operating your life at a mostly unconscious level. Pretty powerful words. We're gonna go ahead and stop there for today on page 107. I would highly recommend <clears throat> going back to your physical life book and highlighting and underlining anything that stood out to you today and review it before your next call with your coach. We'll be starting our next video on page 108 and this particular chapter will be broken up into four sections. Thanks for joining me today.